Fedora 35 is here. If you have been following our news coverage, you probably know all the details. But you haven't tried it yet, let's give you a desktop tour. This is Ankush from its first. Here we take a closer look at Fedora 35 release along with all the important details that you need to know before giving it a try. Fedora 35 may not be the most exciting release of the year, but it is undoubtedly an impressive release where you get to experience GNOME 41 out of the box. Even if the changes aren't experience breaking, there are plenty of valuable additions with Fedora 35. To start with, Fedora 35 introduces the power profile settings accessible right from the system tray. With Linux kernel 5.14 on board, this is a welcome improvement and should help benefit laptop users using Fedora 35. The next key highlight of this release is GNOME 41. If you are looking for a Linux distribution that isn't based on Ubuntu and provides you a vanilla GNOME experience, Fedora 35 should be the perfect pick. That being said, GNOME 41 may not be a major visual overall, but brings in several useful improvements. The changes and improvements to the software center should be the most notable change. While you may notice some performance improvements as well, the addition of context tiles and the ability to know more about an app was a much needed change. When exploring an app or software, in the software center, you get a lot of essential details that you didn't before. Organized screenshots, download size, safety status, age rating, platform support, version history, and links to the project or source code. All the details at a single glance. This may not look like a vital change, but it is an important one improving the user experience. You also get the ability to enable a third-party Flatpak repository right in the welcome screen and choose the source of packages in the software center. It is worth noting that the Flatpak repository included in Fedora 35 is a filtered list of selected open source applications. So if you want to access all the Flatpak packages available in Flathub, you will have to add its repository manually. Overall, the software center is much more accessible, organized, and also helps you find drivers or firmware all under a single roof. With GNOME 41, you wouldn't notice any significant improvement to the settings, but there's a new multitasking setting available that lets you enable hot corner and active screen edges, and also lets you access some multi-monitor tweaks. I couldn't get the hot corner feature working like it works with elementary OS, but you should explore it for yourself. The rest of the options remain the same and well organized. It is important to note that less changes may prove to be better in terms of stability. So Fedora 35 workstation isn't just a bleeding edge distribution this time. It is potentially a more stable experience for the desktop. Not to forget, it comes installed with all the GNOME 41 goodies and includes the Firefox browser. If you want the latest and greatest open source applications, Fedora 35 should not disappoint you. I should also mention that I needed to install a GStreamer multimedia codec add-on to play an MP4 video. It wasn't a big deal, but it should have been pre-installed to handle all kinds of videos for a distribution in 2021. To conclude, the performance was snappy in my experience and along with all the key highlights, you will also find some helpful under the hood improvements like a new firewall D package update, default BTRF file system for Fedora Cloud Edition and the transition to Pipewire for high quality Bluetooth codec support, a better security model and a newer option to pulse audio. Fedora 35 is an exceptional release with no big changes but necessary ones to continue offering the latest and greatest. Have you tried Fedora 35 on your desktop yet? Feel free to let us know what you think about it in the comments down below.